All right, it's nice to be back. It's the highest compliment to have a forecaster invited back. <laughs> well, here's what I'm going to talk about. Uh, uh, a variety of things, but here, let me get more specific about this. Uh, before I get to the agenda, the first thing I like to always monitor, I think I did this last year too, is, you know, what you're concerned about. What are your concerns? So, this is kind of a quiz, so let me know which, uh, what, what, what's pressing on your mind right now to so help me guide through the presentation. So, here, let's go. I don't have any concerns. Business is great, and I just had the best year of my career. Who says that? Who says that? A couple of you. See, my app is instantaneous. Okay, so this one isn't real popular. All right, here, let me go with this. The record high stock market makes me nervous. Who says that? What? Some of you? Hardly? Any? Okay. The consequences of Brexit make me nervous. Anyone? All right. The coronavirus makes me nervous. Makes you nervous? Makes me have fever and cough. Tough audience. <laughs> I'm moving to Montana and hunkering down. Are you worried about the economy? Whatever the case, I've got faith that the Green New Deal will save us all. Who's that? Most of you? Okay. The answer is number one. That should be it. Should have had a great year. None of these other things should be applying so much. Although we'll talk about uh, Corona here shortly going forward. Um, now, you know, when we're, when we're looking at concerns that, that people have, particularly Californians, that's particularly the region I, I try to cover, you know, we, we want to know where, where those concerns are. So if you have a concern, if you're trying to figure out something and find out more information about something because you have a concern, what do you do? What's the first thing that you do? You go online and what? You Google it. Okay, well you may be duck duck going. But we, most of us still Google, right? So Google has Google Trends. Have you used Google Trends? Google Trends, you can go online and find out where people are, what people are, how many people are searching for certain things, certain key concerns that they have. Okay, so I did that. I went online and I, I, and, and, and I went through uh, a whole list of things to do. So, uh, you know, I went through the economy, global warming, homelessness, this year's presidential election, the stock market, the next recession. Are any of these your concerns? Okay, so I go, I, I put that in, and I can tell you that in, for most cases, none of these really popped up as big concerns. All right, so uh, again, I always used Google Trends, and I, I figured out where people were, where people were Googling over the last eight months, going back to July all the way through just this week. Okay, so here's the trend. Okay, so what are these things? What's the top thing that people were concerned about among this list and among the list that I just showed you? Top one, weather. People Googled weather. That's what they were into. Okay? Facebook was the orange line. People Googling Facebook. White football. Notice how football spikes in September, October, November, and then goes down. All right, what about green? What's green? Instagram. Okay, people looking for Instagram. Yellow? Shoes. <laughs> this is true. Go out and do this. Okay, what, and then what was this? What's this green line? Star Wars. <laughs> 
here, here, and then there's, I got another line, here, this pink one, what's this pink one? I thought this would hit, at some point, this was impeachment. Nothing. No concern whatsoever. These are the things that, now if I Google economy or, or any of those other things I just put uh, before, it would have been flat along the bottom compared to all these other things. So this is kind of the concerns that we're seeing among Californians right now, not really big issues, but we'll talk about that as we go on. So here, let me give you the a formal agenda that I'm gonna hit on, and that's update on the U.S. economy, and really talking about what you should know about the U.S. economy, and as we move perhaps uh, into uh, anticipating the next recession. Then the California economy a little bit, the uh, IWV economy, and I wanna talk about the labor markets that are currently occurring here, but, but all aspects of the economy and then the economic outlook for 2020. So that's how this is all gonna go. 2020 is kind of a key year. 2020 was the year in which there was significant predictions made over the last 20 or 30 years. So most of these predictions were made in the 80s and 90s that we were going to see by 2020. You can probably identify with some of these. And this should have happened by 2020, according to old predictions, at least 20 years old. Books will be dead. Okay? Books are not quite dead. Yes, we've got Audible and we've got Kindle, and, but we still have lots of books. People like to take the books and open them up and read them. So that didn't happen. Your every move will be surveilled 24-7. That's not quite happening yet. We still have privacy laws. So, so that's coming, but uh, not quite there. Life expectancy will reach 100. Not quite there yet either. That didn't happen. You will vacation on the moon. And there'll be a military force on the moon. Okay, so that, we're not quite there either. But we are planning a whole bunch of more missions in the next you know, five years or so to, 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 to try to get this going. World population will be at 8 billion. Well, that came close, because we're at 7.7. .7. All right? China will be the world's largest economy. And it's not quite happening. In fact, shrinking day by day. <laughs> right now. Okay. Autonomous vehicles will dominate American highways. All right, so that was a little bit too premature as well. So uh, overstated on that one. But we're going to definitely see that happen soon. And humans arrive on Mars. We've, we've had eight unmanned spacecraft go there, but no humans yet. So that didn't happen. So most of these didn't happen. They were all very optimistic. And then this last one, I have breeding of apes for menial work. Did that happen? Does that happen? You know, it actually, there is some of this happening. Okay, this is a, there's a couple of these taverns in Tokyo. And this was, this was a few years ago, too. It's still going on. But these taverns now, they get these monkeys, these macaque monkeys, to, uh, you know, serve napkins to patrons. And, and this one's bringing a Sapporo beer. I mean, this is Asahi, whatever, to the table. And they do it. There's, you can watch the video it's on YouTube of these monkeys serving these these patrons and uh, they work about two hours and then they have to take a break according to the animal rights activist laws and then they can work another two hours and there's two of them so they get eight hours out of these monkeys <laughs> and, and they even get paid in bananas so we know that this is occurring right now so what's going to come in, during this decade what do you think will happen this is something when people ask me what i do i say i predict the future Right? And I just leave it at that. So, but, so I'm looking at these things, and, and, and this is what should be coming in the next 10 years. Okay. No more Tom Brady in the Super Bowl. <laughs> That's probably accurate. Okay, 5G. 5G, we all know that. That's practically here right now. In fact, you're going to see a 5G phone, iPhone, probably by September, we're thinking. We're guessing. So 5G, and that's really going to help to launch and escalate the autonomous vehicles. Okay, They're going to accelerate with 5G, make them so much more nimble. 
with the, no latency, with very little latency. That's the, sort of the issue with it. You have to have them respond in nanoseconds. So we'll look for autonomous vehicles. And we look at it over the next three, four years, you're going to see so much more of it. There's so much testing going on all over the country, particularly here in California. So don't be surprised when you're you know, out on the 14 and you look to the side of you and you see nobody in the driver's seat driving the car. Because that's going to happen soon. Okay, it'll be interesting. And then you have all the content wars from the streamers, the Netflixes, the Disneys, the Amazons. And that's going to blur the whole vision about TV and movies. So that's going to be that's going to take over big time. And then by the end of the decade, uh, they'll be the, the 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 principal sort of networks. Alexa will control all the systems inside your home. And she pretty much does or can do that right now. So that's that's a no-brainer. And then the economy will not. I'm going to go out on a limb on this one. The economy will not collapse due to climate change. I think we've got a few years, you know, 2030. Okay. All right, what you should know about the U.S. economy. These are the basic things. I'm not going to go into a bunch of mundane statistics about, you know, non-farm employment and uh, agriculture in Iowa. You know, let's give you the basics. So, unemployment rate is at 3.5%. Extremely tight. We are at, we continue to set records every month with the consecutive numbers, uh, consecutive amount of job creation in this country. We're at all time record highs with that. Month after month after month, we continue to create more and more jobs. And despite that, however, the economy is starting to slow down. And so we're not creating quite as many jobs every month, but there's nobody left to hire with an unemployment rate this tight. So the economy is slow. Significantly, from 2.3 last year, uh, or uh, going, to, uh, and it was 2.9 in 2018, and it's even slowing further this year. Okay, there's been this uncertainty with the trade war, and that produced, you know, clouds over the economy in 2019 significantly. Um, but that has abated with the uh, completion of Phase One of the deal which was signed on January 15th. Okay, so we're seeing actually a response to that and it's actually been more uh, beneficial. The stock market was at all time record highs up until this is weak. Okay, so I'll talk a little bit more about that. Here's the S&P 500 index track daily. Uh, or, yeah, this is track daily going back to April, so about the last 10 months or so. And you can see it reached an all time high just last week. And then Kind of corrected here, um, and we'll be able to hit that. Here's the data returns on the Dow year by year by year. They have been spectacular, particularly last year, 23 percent. That follows, you know, after being down a little bit a year, but a 25 percent increase in 2017. So big gains. Stock market's never seen this kind of a run up in kind of decades. So here, more of what you should know. Long-term interest rates now at historical lows. We've never seen the 10-year Treasury bond this low. Never, ever, in the history of humans. Ever, the lowest ever, okay? And it continues to sink even lower. Uh, household wealth is at all-time record highs. Why is that well? It's due to that record high stock market. It's due to the fact that there's very low debt and that households have maintained debt very, very well, particularly since the Great Recession when they, when households had lots of debt, particularly mortgage debt. And we have record high home prices, which are adding to, of course, your overall perception of wealth. So that's what we're seeing right now. All time record highs in household wealth. All right, low interest rates. And in wages adjusted for inflation, the average wage down, has eclipsed the previous peaks so or in unprecedented territory in average salaries among uh, 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 American workers. Inflation is only running around 2% or less. Here's the unemployment rate. It goes all the way back to the mid-1960s, monthly. Here we are. We haven't seen it that low since the 60s, so it's a 50-year low we're operating on. Very hard to hire this situation. 
and, and, and I showed you this last year, I just updated it. Um, it's come down off of its high, but we still have six and a half million job openings. Still, these are some of the highest numbers ever recorded in these statistics. Here's jobs in California. Year after year after year after year. Look at the, that's the expansionary period here, those last eight, nine years. And even last year, when we thought we'd have a slowdown, we, we exceeded all expectations. 290,000 more jobs created in 2019. Okay, so it's been a, a phenomenal what we've been seeing. I, I can't underscore how spectacular the economic uh, scenario of, of, uh, is right now. Okay, it's one of the best times ever for uh, the economy. And then the unemployment rate in California, you saw the national one. Well, the, the, the one of, I can't find a lower rate going back for as long as records have been kept in California. It is very, very tight, and I went on Indeed just to look how many jobs uh, were uh, available, and there was 448,000, which were help, you know, essentially help wanting ads on Indeed. Here's by region, Bay Area, 200,000. Southern California, more than 200,000, and then all the other regions in between. You add them all up, and then you're going to uh, bump in about 600,000. So I think last year I told you, you know, this is a good time to be asking for a raise. And, you know, if you're tired of your job, well, there's lots of opportunity. Lots of opportunity everywhere, given the amount of job openings. Now, as an employer, you already know this because you probably had a hard time. Or, or maybe you haven't. How do you handle your job openings? How do you handle it? Here, this is another quiz. All right? Except we're using the Fast app today. <laughs> we don't have any job openings. Who says that? We don't. You raise your hand. Nobody? Nobody has a job? Oh, a few of you. That's because you're self-employed. <laughs> okay. We recruit new college graduates. Who does that? Okay. A few of you. College graduates, all right. We raid other companies. <laughs> Who does that? Oh, you even admit it. We raid. Come on, I'm telling you. We use all social media to recruit. Who does that? Yeah, a lot of you do that. Okay, good. We're hoping the next recession will eliminate our need to hire. <laughs> that is a strategy. You know? Some people are hoping for the slowdown. So thinking that it won't happen to them and they'll be able to raid much easier than them. Okay, that, that's another strategy. Here's employment in technology sectors in California. When I talk about technology, I'm talking about film, software, data processing, computer systems, scientific consulting, you know, you know all this stuff that you would tend to identify with that. And, and so, look, it looks like we've plateaued in 2019, but that's not a plateauing. That just means that firms can't find people. So it's very tough. It, it, these, firm, these jobs, which are, are widely available, they just can't be filled. Not with an unemployment rate that's indicative of the fact that everybody who wants a job has one already. That's why it's so tough. So here's things you should know about the California economy. We've had surprising strength in job creation. Much of that is the tech, the tech jobs. Okay? It remains the number one growth engine in the state. Number one. Okay? And then new development has been extraordinarily strong. Apartment building in particular in the major metro areas, We've got all the fire rebuilds that are going on right now after the disasters, and then the high-speed rail project. Whether you like it or not, it's going forward big time. And I follow the updates. This was an update of from earlier this month. Uh, hundreds of, 100 miles are now under construction. Let's take a look at that. Construct 30 active projects in the high-speed rail in Madera, Kings, Tulare, and now it's moving big time into Kern. Okay. employing 3,500 construction workers, the largest project for infrastructure in the state. And that's going to continue for the next several years. 
So again, whether you like it or not, it's going forward and uh, it, it's sucking up a lot of construction resources, as is the thousands of fire rebuilds in Northern California. Okay, now Sonoma County, which lost five to 6,000 homes, has pretty much re-permitted all of them. So they're all under construction now or about to start because they have fast-tracked it and so lots of homes in Sonoma and now, but mostly Sonoma. It, it, the permits are now starting to mount in Butte County. That's, they lost 14,000 homes and so we're monitoring that too. Significant construction resources have to go with that into there. That's what we're seeing. Building booms we're seeing in LA and San Francisco metro areas. Other than departments, tons of other kinds of things, recreational facilities, office, residential boom in Sacramento. That could be huge. They've got more projects in the queue than any place else. Sacramento's gonna be big growth city going forward. And then you've got all the major infrastructure projects from all the bond issues that have been passed over the last several years. So school bond projects are going crazy and infrastructure because of SB1 and the gas tax. So that's it. So there's significant competition for construction resources right now. Here's investment in new commercial industrial structures in California. There was 2018 and 2019 record highs, never seen this high ever before in the history of this series. That's what's going on in California. You go downtown LA, it's Crane City. Similarly in San Francisco. Much of that non-residential and commercial is this, is office buildings. Office buildings. You know, we're practically at another little peak here in office, the amount of investment going into office buildings, new office structures. Now, here, vertical axis, three billion. Doesn't that number sound familiar, three billion? That puts in context your, the, 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 the appropriated money for, for the base, for recovery, for earthquake uh, repair. And, you know, that's, that's equivalent to all the new office projects in California one year. That's how big that is. Huge. Okay. So here, construction workers, you know, we need you in construction. There, there's another career for you. Okay? So if you're tired of your job, we can use you in construction right now. All right, here's the unemployment rate for construction workers in the U.S. In 2019, it was the lowest ever recorded. There's none, nobody either. So it, this, is, this makes it a challenge for, it's going to make a challenge for the, recover, for the earthquake recovery because of this the utilization of these resources is already full in California. All right, let's talk about the recession, which we don't have yet, all right? So, but it is, as, as I've talked about before, the most widely anticipated recession in history. Okay. Why? It's because the current expansion is old, very old, right? And we know that this can't last forever because the sun doesn't shine forever. All right, and I've updated this from last year. We're running at 128 consecutive now months of expansion. These are all the economic expansions that follow recessions since the 1940s. So some of you can see in the early year, in the, in the early uh, part of this series, that some expansions only lasted 30, 40 months before another recession hit. But then you had. The 60s, that was 105, and the 90s is 120, and now we're 120. We've eclipsed it, we're at record territory. With the expansion is old, so everybody's like, okay, when does this end? That's what we're all thinking. Well, we look to consumers and we see, are they getting tired? Are they getting frustrated? Are they getting nervous? But we track their sentiment, their confidence, and by questions. Like, how do you see, you know, your job prospects? What about your income? Are you going to be spending? All they get all put into an index, and as the index rises, that means they're more optimistic and hopeful. And you can see where that is. It's, it's at one of the highest levels ever recorded for this index. Still, this is February. This is this month. Of course, this is the early Michigan survey. So. 
Consumers don't appear to be nervous at all. What would consumers worry about? Well, they worry about their jobs and it's today and in the future, their wealth, the stock market, their home values, that's what they're gonna worry about. They're gonna worry about recession. Affecting those things. All right? So, if, what's the Google? Here, go back to the Google trends and let's search for a recession. Here it is from July to February. There, there's a little tick up there in August when the stock market sold off. And everybody was Googling recession. But to put this in context, what if you Googled the 49ers? <laughs> a lot more interest there. Nobody's worried about this. See, and they see the 49ers peaked around Super Bowl, and now nobody cares about them. <laughs> Losers. <laughs> Who should worry about a recession? Should you? Anyone that has a job should worry about a recession. Business owners too. State, county, governments, because they rely on the revenue forthcoming from business. Anyone with debt. If you have debt, you can't really service it if the revenues that you're taking in are lower due to the recession. Lenders, because then they may not get paid back. So, it, 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 you know, generally everyone, everyone should worry about a recession, everyone should. Okay, so let's look at some of our leading indicators here. This is the index of leading indicators, and it's sort of moving lateral right here through December in the U.S. economy, and this gives us indications about, well, are some of the indicators which would be early leads, early, uh, you know, uh, predictions of things falling off, and it's moving lateral, maybe slightly down, really not enough to worry about here, but nothing is deteriorating. It's not really eroding away right now through December. Here's the probability of recession, another composite index of a bunch of indicators that we look at to give us a probability of the U.S. being in the recession in six months. Okay? It's down, it ticked up a slight bit in December to 14%, 13%. We don't normally worry about this until it's at 50. So this is an indication that we're slowing down significantly enough to be worried about a real economic downturn. Now, manufacturing has been in a downturn. Okay? So it, it reached a, a peak in, in 2018, 2017, but it's been eroding away. Why? Because of the trade war. Largely because of the trade war. Trade war. Phase one, very optimistic. Uh, phase one signed on January 15th. January blipped way back up. So there's been this bounce back response. But what about housing? Housing led us into the recession and during the Great Recession, the last one we had. We have to worry about housing. We have to look at this very carefully. So here's housing going back 40 years or more. Recessions impact housing. This is where you really see it. We saw it, of course, last time. So there's the 8082 recession. There is the 91 recession. There's the 2001 recession. And there's the Great Recession right there. So you can see it. You can see the home sales declining substantially. There, there. Not so much there, but a little bit. And then the Great Recession, they really plummeted. So what is housing telling us now? Look where housing is now. Look at 2018, 20, the last two bars on the right. It's all, it seems like it's already at recession lows or close to it. Uh, the signals for housing are not really great. In fact, the uh, housing market is kind of sputtering. It's been sputtering for quite some time in the nation in California. It has its moments, but they're not really big moments. So nationwide, However, we don't see it manifest in eroding prices. They're still going up. In many regions, they're going up. But where affordability is a challenge, okay, that, like in the coastal areas of the state, this is where we're seeing the corrections occur. So we are watching this. Here's median home selling prices by county, and the blue are the inland counties, and the yellow are the coastal counties. So, you know, there you go. And this was for Jeff. These are real fresh data. Just pulled these off. This is the median selling price for a home in these counties in January. So Kern, Fresno, San Bernardino, Sacramento. Relatively affordable. And you can see the other ones are not. 
and in Santa Clara, San Francisco. Those are and those are down. Those are down. Those prices are down from the, where they were six, seven months over here. I'll show you. Uh, there, so there's uh, inland, and then there's the coastal. Big area. But here's the home price appreciation in 2019. So this was 2019 where it ended up versus 2018. And uh, again, the coastal uh, areas are in yellow. Inland is blue. And you see, the inland are still rising. They still have positive appreciation. But it's the yellow that are more compromised. And you can see Santa Clara and San Francisco were down. Still down now. So we are seeing adjustments. So the market is a little more efficient this time with adjustments. But it's not based on speculation like it was 10 years ago. It's now based on, hey, there's no supply. Demand is just growth. It's greater than supply growth in housing. Here, so let me ask you this. I asked you this last year, which made the changes. When is the next recession? When do you believe the next recession is coming? So here, by June of this year, who says that? The next few months, who says by June? Is there anybody? No one's willing to step over the line. By the end of 2020, okay, anybody in that camp? Okay, a few of you, a few of you are willing to commit. No later than the spring of 2020, so about a year from now, okay? A lot more of you, okay? Here, we're in recession now. Who says that? Nobody? It could be. We well could be. Never, I'll be isolated in Montana, hunkering down. <laughs> I won't even feel it. I'll be in a one-room cabin with a case of spam. <laughs> here, here are the answers. It, probably it, within a year, but if you answer that, we, it could be here. It kind of went back too fast. Okay? We could be in it now. And, and here, I'll, I'll show you why. Now, you already know. Okay, candidates for consideration of recession, the trade wars, and tariff policy, which is still in place, largely. But we're seeing, we saw manufacturing bounce back, we see consumer attitudes much better, everybody's still employed, looks good. Stock market collapse, that could cause a, a, a problem. The stock market collapse could cause a problem, and, I, and we'll go through with that. Housing market, and the housing market hasn't done much anyway, so how's it gonna lead us anywhere? It hasn't led anything. The retail apocalypse, okay? And you heard previous speakers talk about that, all the e-tail, right? And retail stores just shuttering. But that's probably not likely. We're gonna see probably a much more uh, uh, even transition going on in that. The zombie apocalypse, how about that? Would that cause a recession? Probably, probably cause more than a recession. And then that leads me to Corona. Corona, all right, and what that is happening now, because that would significantly slow world economic growth, which we rely on. So we'll talk about that. Here is GDP of China. It's already been slowing, going into the fourth quarter of 2019. You know, where do you think it is this quarter? What do you think the GDP of China is this quarter in terms of growth? It's probably negative because everything is shut down there. Okay, so the hottest topic right now nearly, uh, clearly is the, this virus, right? And uh, so we're wondering if this has really just come on us just suddenly. So we really had to like, okay, what do we do and how's this gonna affect things? So here's another Google trends and so to put this in context, that's the weather, again, and that's Corona. So you can see Corona actually did get some action. People got concerned, they got more concerned about it than the weather, at least for a bit. It may be coming back up now again, as you can see. But this is starting to become a concern. It's a much bigger concern than the economy or recession or the presidential election or impeachment or anything. No, Corona is, you know, it's giving you some response, at least. Right? Oh, well, here's a quiz. How do you get the virus? How do you get it? Let's go over a few. You can answer here. Answer. You drink Corona beer. <laughs> Who says that? 
Nobody? Nobody? I wouldn't drink any. You go to Disneyland. Is that how you get it? Yes, that's how you get it. If it's in Shanghai. Right? The Shanghai Disneyland. Big. Nobody's going there. Closed it. Visit the Duomo in Milan. You get it that way? Who says yes? You guys are really silent, some of you. Only a few of you. Okay, yes, you do. That's how, in fact, here it is. And this is, these are my kids. We were there 18 months ago, or a little bit longer. And so we got to see it. There's crowds of people all in front of it. It's really crowded in that courtyard. Right? And now, there's nobody there. The Italians are just in amazement. It's like an empty field. Empty soccer field. But that's, uh, but they've closed it down. And everything's called, uh, Milan is, is one of the centers for where we're seeing the infections occur. Here, here's another one. Join a weird cult called the Temple of the Tabernacle of the Testimony. Who says that? <laughs> See, some of you are good readers. Yes, this is it. Because like 60% of this membership are infected. And this is how most of the South Korean infections have occurred. All right? From this church. Interesting. Take a cruise on the Diamond Princess. <laughs> Which is how most of the people, nearly all the people in the U.S., the current cases that we have, have been affected. And the ones that weren't on the Diamond Cruise were in Asia. So everybody that's affected here got it from this or the Asian uh, presence. Right? So yes, that ride a Tokyo party boat down the Sunda River. And again, that's how a lot of the Japanese, or, or the 10 people were infected, and then they went off and infected a whole bunch of other people. And that's why Japan tends to be an issue right now. So. Uh, so yes, those are, how about eating lamb kebabs in Tehran, right? Who says that? A bunch of you put your hands up, okay. No, that's, why would that be the case? You guys have been in the desert too long. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I kind of baited you on that one, but, but whatever. So, so be more attentive here. Okay. 57 cases in the U.S., 78,000 in China out of 81.9. So yeah, it's basically in China right now. And this, I just took these data off last night. So this is as of last night. Things have changed significantly this morning. Okay, so far, these are the principal places where it's limited. There's a little isolated, but it's just these, just four places and China. All right? Much of China economy is idle. Shanghai, Disneyland closed. Many businesses, including factories, are closed. Cruise ships canceled. Flights coming in to the U.S. and other places are, are, uh, are uh, uh, canceled, postponed, limited significantly. So that's what's going on. This has just happened abruptly. This is really impacting certain commerce. So here's the sequence of events. So this is how we get it going to go into recession from the coronavirus. This is it, okay? Hypothetical. So we have this gl global pandemic that turns into a panic. It's probably turned into a panic in some spots. Then the stock market sells off, which we've already seen. Sold off 1,000, and then 900, and then yesterday another, I forget what it was, and then it was down 400 this morning. I don't know where it is now, it's cheap. Oh, it, it turned positive? No, it was positive. Oh, 620, okay. So here we go, there, there it is. There's number two of my bullet. Then consumers are impacted, right? Because they look or look at the stock market, 52% of all, all Americans are in the stock market in some way, directly or indirectly. And then that pulls back on their spending, on our spending. And then Chinese tourism has already stopped. And then general global tourism gets significantly curtailed. Right? You can't move around. I mean, no one's going to Italy now. And no one's going to China. And Chinese aren't coming here. And Chinese spend like uh, $4 billion a year in California. It's big. So you have tumbleweeds blowing through hotel lobbies. Because of the lack of tourism. 
That, that's part of the deal. And then, then you have all the supply chains from factories in China that are uh, disrupted. And American businesses and other businesses all around here can't get inputs, can't get their stuff from China. So their businesses flounder and go under. See how this works? It's just a ripple effect. And, and, and China is in a mess right now. With factories closed, workers can't go to work. Nothing's being made. It, 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 it's tragic. Look, even Google, Apple, and Tesla are all impacted right now by the supply chains. So it is happening. It goes on and on. So we're just wondering how bad this is going to get. Okay? And, and it's happening all in real time. Just started happening just in the last you know week. So this is all fresh stuff here that we're kind of grappling with. Here's the Dow daily, the last 125 days, going back to uh, you know August is here to uh, uh, February. Just I just took this last night and went on the close, and so it ran straight up to all-time record highs last week, and then it's made this major correction. So. We are seeing that sell off in the stock market. So that's kind of worrisome. And that could put us ultimately in recession along with all the other events that I showed you. So those are the, those are the sequence of events that we're worried about. But, we, but with pandemics, if it really is caused by this, if we really do get a slowdown and then growth really gets hit, we're not looking at the standard U type of recession. We're mostly looking at a V type of recession. You guys heard these terms before? U's and V's. Okay, the U is where the economy goes down, growth sputters, and then you, you sort of bump along the bottom for a while, and it's painful and miserable, and people are unemployed and not spending, and it's yucky. And then you go back up and recover. But a V shape is you sharply go down, you bounce off the bottom, the pandemic gets resolved, spring comes out, it gets warmer, flu, you know, gone, and we, we rebound sharply. Like nothing happened. So there was only short term misery. So that's what we're kind of looking at. If this is what is going to get us into recession. So think about that. Let me talk about the regional economy now. East Carter. A couple of notes on Inyo. I won't have too much on Inyo. Uh, I kind of shared it with you last year. But Eastern Current and particularly uh, Inyo Wells Valley. So this is, when you add Inyo to Eastern Current, you get 102, about 102,000 people, all right? And a lot of those people are in these industries, working in these industries, or involved in these industries. The scientific, and professional, and technical services, recreation and hospitality, and healthcare. Those are like the big three. The big three sectors here, okay? And you've heard from previous speakers that are they're dealing with these. And of course, the big, the big entities here are is the Air Force Base and the Naval Base, as we all. No, I'm tell you that. And then all the energy projects are significant. I just can't believe how much desert floor is covered in solar panels. To me, and more are coming. More are coming. Solar wind as well. And then you have all the mining, Cerros Valley, Trona, Boron, all in the east. So those are, that's a big deal here. And then all the recreation. So there you go. That, basically is the economic engines of this area. Okay, these aren't trivial. That valley's been phenomenal the last few years. Look at that. Have you seen this? This run-up in visitors of Death Valley? Why has this gotten so popular? I mean, but, but that's the official park service numbers. It's crazy. Okay. Never seen anything quite like that exponentially. Quickly on Inyo, the unemployment rate's very low. The last two years saw significant positive growth, well not significant, but positive growth in employment where they hadn't had it before. So that county has finally created a few jobs. However, those jobs are simply limited to local government and, and hospitality for the most part. The largest employer is the Oasis Hotel, the two hotels in the Death Valley area. Death Valley and the casinos. Okay, so that, that's, that's where it is in India. Not much else. Age demographics if of the county are, are really not going to benefit long term growth in Inyo County. So we're kind of worried about Inyo County. 
population is in decline. And basically, up until this the last two years where we saw some job growth, employment's been in decline. So it, it, it's a county that doesn't have a lot of dynamic movement right now. Again, immediately to the north. And one of the reasons is, well, the basic reason is, is this is a very old county. Demographics are very old. Nearly 25% of the county is 65 and over. Compare that to, well, here, and then California. You know, the Greater Ridgecrest area is similar to California, a little bit higher, not much. The calories are around 15. So this is significantly higher in terms of age demographics, 65. And then under age 18, it's got a very, very low percentage as well. So again, this does not help the longer term growth prospects for Inyo. Inyo's gonna have to do something to you know, migrate more millennial populations in right now. It's certainly not happening. We see there's much greater health of the age distributions in Eastern Kern County. Simply put, population of Inyo has been declining for the last several years, right? Population of Eastern Kern County has been rising and is at an all-time high right now. Uh, we get 83, about 83.6, 83,600 people in the eastern part of Kern County. And most of that is being driven by, because a subset of that, is by the Indian Wells Valley, area, which we also call the Greater Ridgecrest area. Uh, and we're seeing it. We're, we're, uh, the area is, about, uh, is, is just under 36,000 people. And growing, as you can see, it's been growing, growing, growing since 2000. Relatively strong growth. Very impressive, actually. An employment rate. I, I talked about uh, Inyo, uh, Ridgecrest area, Greater in, Ridgecrest area, Inyo, Wells Valley area, uh, 5.2, but within the city limits, it's negligible. Negligible. It's very hard to recruit, as, as we've already talked about. Kern County wide is 7.2. And largely, that's because of agriculture, much more prevalent in other parts of Kern County, which tends to have uh, seasonality and therefore unemployment, and reemployment, and unemployment, reemployment. There's the picture over the long term. It's the lowest it's ever been since records have been kept, like every other jurisdiction I've shown them to me. Okay, that's the picture. And uh, Ridgecrest is is also. Uh, indicative of a, a, a higher educational population too. So the yellows are just high school or less, the blue is some college or an A degree, and the pink is a bachelor's or higher degrees, and Ridgecrest beats out the rest of Eastern Kern and in county in college or some college. So it's, it's more educated area, and it's got a higher income. Now this is median income. And uh, there's Inyo, Kern, Kern beats out slightly Inyo. Uh, but Inyo is high because the population is so old that you know they've amassed some wealth uh, and some income rates like pension income coming in. This is the median household income. The average household income is about seventy-five thousand per household. Okay, some other updates. Th this area arguably is the contain leading economic engine in Eastern Kern County. You know, I mean, it, given what's happening here, and certainly the 800 pound gorilla is the base in the room. And then the, all the professional services which support the base, and then mining, and then tourism. Those are the principal engines, as we all know. Population of the area, we're just, uh, you're just under 30,000 in the city limits, and uh, just under 36,000 in the greater Ridgecrest area. That includes Sears Valley and Inyo Kern, of course, with that many people. The annual growth rate's around 1%, which is running about what the rest of Kern County is at. <laughs> labor markets, uh, vibrant. They're vibrant. I'll show you the China Lake numbers coming up. Same thing with uh, the regional hospital, which is uh, growing strongly, sharply. And uh, recreation and hospitality is still quite vibrant. Utilization uh, rates for your transient lodging facilities. For, for, as far as records go back, they're at the all-time high right now. 
Not much new development in the region. We can see that in the data. Okay, but as you know, Peggy indicated this morning, a lot more is coming. So it'll be very interesting to track that in the data and the statistics that get shown in the future and how that's going to change. Home prices continue to rise. Zillow calls the local market hot. You know, they rate all the markets if you go on the Zillow sites. Which because it's hot. Hot right now. Okay, here's the median selling prices. It's actual homes sold, existing homes. This is existing homes. So uh, Ridgecrest is running neck and neck with the rest of Eastern Current in terms of the median home selling price. Uh, I got it for uh, 2019, you know, for all of 2019, it was 20, it was 2017, up 5.5% over a year ago. Okay, so that's where you are. Home sales are a little bit down in 2019, but not by much. Kind of in the line or in tandem with all other areas of California, which was down a little bit. Here, here are the prices if you just want to know if given the area, Kernville, New Kern, Olacha, California City, Mojave, all the way down to Toronto. So there you are, which kind of is topping the list in terms of median selling prices as of January, this is for the month of January 2020 only, not the 2019 price, which I showed you before, but this is just twice, so you can see that they continue to rise going into 2020. Let me talk a little about tourism. Okay, here's Jack at the Pinnacles. All right, looking at, this was a cool commercial. Go on YouTube and watch this if you haven't seen it. Quite funny. So, and I showed you this last time, and Elizabeth at the Film Commission shared all this with me, and then I just updated the lists to include, you know, Top Gun and, the, and some other commercials that have gone on. But again, uh, there's so much that goes on here with film. Those of you who are out of the area, I mean, the, this is a hotbed for film. If you need to film a space movie, this is where you come. Some scenes, right? All the space movies are here. Or even Western. Westerns used to be much bigger. So uh, it, the Film Commission, Ridgecrest, and the Bureau of Land Management, they're the ones that provide the land, facilitate all the production in the region. And over the last six years, all the way through 2019, 226 permits issued for productions. 17 million taken in direct permit fees. Okay, that's a big stimulus. That's, a, that's another stimulus to the Ridgecrest regional economy. It's all that film production. And that doesn't include all the expenditure by all these crews you know, on hotels and materials and supplies and food and, you know, rentals and the whole deal. It's just a direct rent, uh, permit fees. And then this year, Four more permits issued in January, I think uh, one in February, and then uh, we're seeing a couple more in March already. So, could be another big year, bigger year for film production. Here's the permits, so you see they were kind of moderating here over time and they were up again in 2019. The pace could actually exceed that, but it, it, it doesn't matter, revenues are up, which means that these crews are staying longer. So they may have a production shoot, but they're staying more days. Okay. Average hotel motel occupancy in the high desert region, which is, of course this is one of the epicenters of that. It, it, it drew out 20, that was the 2019 numbers. Hi, I've never seen them this high. They're running very high. Utilization is very strong. I showed you Death Valley attendance, which was at all time high. It's coming back also at Red Rock Canyon State Park, so that attendance has risen. I don't know quite how they monitor that. They sort of estimated. And then employment in this industry, the hospitality industry, and then also in restaurants, down a little bit in 2019, but still very strong uh, and, and very important to the region. Okay. In fact, let's, let's talk about, uh, there's 20 hotels in the Ridgecrest area, and they employ a lot of these people as well as the restaurants. Okay. But let's talk about the labor markets in general, so you can see where other things are happening. Of course, here's the base. This is all federal civilian employment from all commands at the base. And, and uh, I was able to obtain these numbers recently. 5185 is where we're currently. You can see this run up over time. The run up has been spectacular. Rising, rising, rising. And it go, it's in line, it's in tandem with the defense budget. So there's the budget, it's going up. So does deployment at the base. 
You know, we thought with sequestration and things like that, we'd see the defense budget go down because Congress, you know, doesn't want to continue to increase it. But Trump, the Trump administration asked for, this is the, the four-year budget that they've asked for, to keep DOD spending relatively high, and they're likely to get something close to this. But again, that's a, that's a big negotiating tool year after year after year. We won't know the final until October. But this would keep employment going. Uh, just on uh, with with the basic mission at the base at, at record levels at record level. Here's the average salary now in 2019 is bumping up against 100,000 for federal civilian employees. This is amazing. Okay, for the, for the largest employer and the largest employment group to have the largest salary. It's very unusual. The average salary for the entire rich crest market is. You know, Fast is 65,000 per worker, which is higher than the rest of the current count. It's higher than the rest of the current count. It's been rising. Professional, technical, scientific, and engineering employment. All time high in the greater Ridge Crescent area, right? 1,555 people. And, 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 and rising, as you can see, it's been rising, supporting largely the base effort. Here it is. Here's the same series in all of Kern County. Okay, so current has been kind of consolidated in Kern County. This is all of Kern County. And so it's been rising a little bit, it's trying to recover, right? But Ridgecrest has a big share of this. So Ridgecrest has 4% of the Kern County population, the greater area does, but it has 16% of the professional, technical, and scientific engineering jobs. So it has got four times, you know, its fair share to four times in this in the STEM areas. How important that is. Total employment, Ridgecrest, all-time record high, 12,600 wage and salary jobs in the region. And this is how it's changed year after year over the last five years. So last year, uh, 2019, about 400 jobs were created, less than the previous two years. Why? Because everybody's got a job. It's really tough to hire. I'm sure there's a lot of open positions. But we're, it's, it, it, it's, it's, it's seeing the same slowdown everywhere else because it's so tough to hire bodies that don't exist, right? The largest employers, we updated this in late January, early <coughs> February. Clearly, uh, you know, the Navy is the largest employer here to the rest in order. And uh, this is the change from 2017. So this is the change over the last two years. So uh, they, uh, uh, the station, the air, the air station is up 152 positions. The regional hospital up 114. They're all up. Well, except for sailing. I talked to sailors. And the only reason they're down is because they've got all these open positions that they can't fill. <laughs> they be up, but they, they're, they're trying to be diligent in filling those positions. So it's the only reason. Otherwise, again, it would be impossible. Healthcare in Ridgecrest is sharply up, all time high. I mean, they all have to say it, all time high. This is very impressive. You don't see this in all communities right now. And then construction is moving up. We know this is going straight to the stratosphere shortly with uh, all of the uh, obligations that this area has. So here's the number of new homes permitted per year in Ridgecrest over time, right? And it was down a little bit in 2019. But still, it's anywhere between 50 and 70 units per year. That's the way it's been the last three, four years. Right? And construction uh, employment is up to, uh, to facilitate this, but it's up for other things too, including the earthquake repair in all, all areas. So when you look at new homes listed for sale, you get, uh, I find 36, and number that are listed for less than 300,000 and only 12, which makes 24 above 300,000. The median listing price for new homes listed is about 350,000. So that's significantly greater than the 200,000 for existing homes. So there's a real disparity between new and existing here in the Rich Crescent area for real estate. Here's new commercial and industrial investment or permit, or permit value for non-residential. For non and it's been, you know, negligible the last several years. Just negligible. 
right? The big year that uh, here is that this was the Walmart. All right? But now you've got so much more happening in the pipeline, right? which is getting the mayor mayor address that. You've got, uh, and you've got more units coming too. You've got the Mojave new apartments, the Red Rock villas. You've got the Oasis retail project. Okay, so that's coming. And uh, you got a big casino. So it's going to be interesting to see how this picture changes in the next year or two. It's going to be phenomenal. Okay, retail employment, retail apocalypse. It certainly has caused consolidations in uh, brick and mortar stores. We've seen retail employment actually decline. Not that much. When you actually look at the horizontal, the, the vertical axis, it's not that big in numbers, but they are down unlike almost every other sector in town. Retail stores have consolidated as well, not as many retail stores, and again, the online presence is dominating. Okay. But, uh, you know, as Peggy showed you earlier, retail sales, and I got a longer picture of it, are, you know, they're at record highs. It, it, it moderated over the last few years, but nevertheless, they still got went up, and they're at all-time highs in the city. So, that's a good thing. Okay, the forecast, and then I'm done. There's really not much I can say that is weakening around here. Normally I'm trying to at least pick that out. So for the broader US economy, this is how we see GDP growth going. We end up with uh, a 3 2, two economy now. And that was three, and then two, and then two. So three in 2018, two in 2019, and two again about, you know, roughly speaking, in 2020. That's what we see the economy as the base case. That's the base case. And then maybe 2% next year, too. So the summary is that we're in a 3-2-2 economy, and that's been revised up from a year ago when I gave this talk. We are in a 3 2 one economy. But prospects have actually gotten better this year because we're no longer in that trade war, or at least not to the extent that we were. Other things have become a little bit more favorable. All right, a two percent economy moves us out of the possibility of a uh, uh, recession due to vulnerability. Still slow, but we're not quite on the precipice like one percent. Interest rates remain low through 2020, 1.34 percent today. Well, actually, when I looked at the treasuries this morning, they were 1.28. Again, the lowest ever in the history of time. So if you're going to refinance, do it. This is it. Probably don't need to. Inflation is a non-issue. The housing market is not going to collapse. So that's not going to be a problem. And, and it's correct. That's why I showed you those uh, immediate selling prices. They are adjusting. They weren't, didn't adjust to the Great Recession, not until it's too late. But they are adjusting now to some extent. It's not going to help much. But We'll see, we'll see how that goes. Labor markets remain real tight. All right, another six months of economic expansion. Actually, I'm gonna take that away and say, actually, uh, 12 months. However, it's a pronounced slowdown, and we don't know what's gonna happen with the corona virus, right? So recession is delayed until we know more about that. Because this could, you know, end up spiraling, putting us in a downward spiral, or it could end up uh, uh, abating, and we don't get the kind of infectious panic that many of the people on Wall Street are anticipating. That's why the market is eroding the way it is. So we just got to watch this day to day to see if this is the cause of the recession or if it's just a short-term, you know, blip, like SARS was or MERS, the previous two viruses that you know, were problematic, but they didn't create economic havoc like we possibly could see with this one. Okay, so you should start preparing for the risk of recession, at least by this year, the mid-year, maybe even sooner now, given the virus. So start thinking about that. Expect continued difficulty with crudity. Expect a much more volatile stock market, all right? If the virus dies down soon, recession is probably delayed until next year, or further, for that matter. 
Skilled workforces are going to be scarce, regardless of what happens. So you're going to have to offer higher salaries. Tight construction labor market, we already talked about that. More housing is coming, and we know that more housing is coming. We've got lots of things going on here with respect to more housing. Home price appreciation moderates, and uh, uh, so we don't quite forecast the same appreciation rates at all. In fact, consolidations in many of the coastal communities. The fastest growing jobs going forward are going to be in these areas here. Tech, construction, personal care. Okay, because of the demographics, healthcare in general. That's where it's happening. That's where you can steer all your kids to. The last several years of the defense budget have been good for the region. All right, so expect four more years of defense stimulus. We don't really see that being a problem. Uh, expect also years of construction stimulus. Years. I mean, I thought it would be like three, four years, but they're telling me now it could be five to seven years of significant construction stimulus. That's a long time. So it's going to be very fun to monitor this statistically with the data and watch this grow, okay, with all the uh, repair and replacement of new facilities. So in general, because of that and, other, and the, all the other things that I've talked about today, you have a very auspicious outlook, and it's for the indefinite future, okay? You know, I don't see a lot of weakness here. I, mean, I probably haven't heard much today at all. It's because there's not. So job opportunities are abundant now, but they will broaden further next year. So here's, here's the number, here's the forecast by the numbers. So here was 2019, to the extent that it's pretty much actual by now. And so jobs created, we, we look for at least the same jobs created this year and up to 600, maybe even more if a lot of those construction contracts get let. Okay, unemployment rate's gonna hang around the 3% range, income growth still another 4%, those are big numbers. I mean, so we're only running 2% inflation and we're 4% income growth. You're, 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 you're making out here, right? Inflation rate down, it's been down this year. Lower, probably lower the next year. New housing production. You know, before I heard Peggy talk today, I was thinking 70 to 100, but it could be more than that with the Red Rock Villas and, and the, some of those other affordable housing projects. And so we'll, we'll, walk, we'll see how those permits all sort of meet out. Retail growth sale, we got 2.5% because of all the new stimulus that's going to be coming into town. And medium home price, per, price appreciation, not 5 6%, but half that. Not as much. We see the, really a slowdown overall in California. Besides, you'll be having more supply, which normally doesn't behoove appreciation rates. Okay, so that is the forecast. You have nothing to worry about. Well, you do have something to worry but we're monitoring that, and I'm sure you are very closely. So that is the end of the presentation. Thank you.